Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview with the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Our guests are Chef Neil Perry from Qantas Airways and actor-comedian Sammy Shore. Neil Perry was born and raised in Australia. When he was 19, he began working as a restaurant manager. And by the time he was 24, he'd excelled with the front of the restaurant skills and was looking for a new challenge. This is when Neil decided to fulfill his lifetime dream of becoming a chef. We caught up with award-winning chef Neil Perry at the Los Angeles International Airport, where on yet another big challenge, he was cooking and checking on the Qantas Airways catering service. Hi, Neil. Hi, Joan. How are you? Good. What's your actual uh, official title at Qantas Airways? Well, we're uh, the food and service consultants, the Rockpool Group, of which uh, you know I'm the director and head chef. What is the Rockpool Group? Well, it's a group of restaurants, I guess. We, we started Rockpool 10 years ago. It's our anniversary this month. We're 10 years old. And along the way, we've added five more restaurants and a catering company and now consulting for, uh, for Qantas, which is great. But totally Australian. Totally Australian, yeah. You've worked in restaurants. You started, as we said before, when you were 19. Yeah. Um, did you ever hang out in the kitchen? Yeah, always uh, when I was younger. I mean, I've been fascinated with food all my life, so it's sort of a natural progression um, into the kitchen, and uh, I've, I've really loved it. What did you have to do to become a chef? Did you just hang out in the kitchen, or did you <laughs> no, actually go out. to school? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't go to any uh, technical college, but I actually worked with some of the best chefs in Australia at the time uh, for, for a couple of months at a time, and uh, after 12 months then started, started working my own restaurant. And then it was kind of like, uh, it's been 16, 17 years now of working in the kitchen and, uh, and, and growing, I guess. Now that you have your own restaurant, is it important to have known uh, how to manage a restaurant, what was going on in the kitchen? Do you, do yeah. you come out and see what's going on? Yeah, it's really important for me because actually I, I run all the businesses. So we have a situation where we've got five restaurants, I've got, I've got three or four executive chefs and general managers and, and I, I run them as well as all the menus and work in the kitchen. So all that time at front of house and, and learning to run restaurants was really important for me. Do you still cook? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do actually, yeah. <coughs> where are uh, the locations of your restaurants? They're all in fairly close to the city centre, so in the Rocks and in Darling Harbour. I'm opening a new one in, in March in, uh, in Rushcutters Bay, so it's all within about five kilometres of the, of the centre of the city. And why should any of our viewers come to Australia? <laughs> Well, because it's a great place. I mean, Australia's a fantastic city, great, great climate, wonderful people, very friendly, very safe, um, and it's very beautiful. I mean, there's lots of really wonderful things to see there. And, of course, the food's terrific. I was That's just going to have, yeah, thing. we were going to talk about the food. Yeah. What kind of menus do you uh, have in your restaurants? Well, Australian food is, is reasonably eclectic. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's sort of the multicultural nature of Australia, the wonderful produce that we grow. So we grow everything from great Thai ingredients to beautiful English spinach. We have great, great fresh fish and, uh, and things like the beef and, and, and poultry is terrific. So it, particularly in the last 10 or 15 years, the produce is so wonderful that Sydney, Sydney Australian restaurants are very produce driven. So it's a little bit like, like California, you know, using the best available stuff that's really fresh or really vibrant. Do you import things that you need or do you sure, export we, products? Well, right? we export a lot of produce to uh, Asia and, and oh, Japan. The other way, the other and way. To the States, yeah. <laughs> and to the States. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> a, lot of, a lot of lamb comes, comes in and a lot of seafood comes into the States. And we also uh, you know, have a really fantastic uh, wine 
wine sort of regions oh, right. in Australia, wine culture, and uh, exports are, are booming and lots coming to the States, a lot goes to London. I think we uh, in America don't realise how abundant yeah. these things are in Australia. We just look at you as a little <coughs> island over there. Yeah, sure. Over there. <laughs> over, it, it's, it's over there, but you know, like 14 hours on a plane, and particularly with Qantas at the moment where the, you know, the seats are so fantastic and of course the food's great. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. It makes it really about. easy, but uh, <laughs> you know, getting, getting there, once you're there, I mean, it's a beautiful place, and I think the great thing for, for Americans is that you know, we all speak English, we all um, speak the same language, and it's, very, and, uh, you know, it's really safe and fantastic, and the American dollar uh, is, is sort of, you know, buys a lot in Australia. Let's, and, uh, let's, let's get back to this food, fresh food. You can serve it in your yeah. restaurants. How do you translate that kind of menu to an airline? Well, by keeping it really simple and by <coughs> making sure that, that the produce we use is the very best. So things like when we're flying out of, out of LA, we go to La Brea Bakery, which is great bread, oh. and we put that bread on board. So it's really looking at things like bread, salad, great cheese, uh, fresh fruit that's, that's really ripe, all those sort of cornerstones, and then working back and saying, okay, well, we've got to go do a, a really nice, simple main course. But it's getting all the, all the peripheral things right that's very important to us. Do you spend a lot of time in these different uh, spots? <coughs> Say, yeah. L what is it, LA? Yeah. Australia. Well, LAX, well we, have, Australia. we have like f uh, 14 first class ports and about 28, I think it is, business and economy ports in the world. And it's really important to us to have a relationship with all the caterers and with the, with the city itself so we know what the best produce is. So we, we work a lot on that. I've got about six people who work full time and they're traveling all the time. And oh, I see. Well, would there be a difference in <coughs> the type of catering you do for Qantas? compared to the type of catering you do for a party for that your, your restaurant was putting on? Well, what we do is we're very mindful of what, what the food has to go through and how it has to be served, but the same fundamental philosophy is there that great produce, fresh produce makes great food. So it's, it's that taking that underlining sort of philosophy through service and food that Rockpool stands for that actually is what we're really focusing on at Qantas. It might not necessarily be a Rockpool dish that takes you know, eight or nine chefs to put together, uh, but what it is <coughs> is beautiful, fresh, simple food that has that same philosophy. Let's start with great produce and let's make a great dish out of it. We know usually business class and yep. first class meals are far <coughs> superior to anything that they serve in the back of the plane. Can you change that? We believe we can. We, we've sort of, we believe we've reinvented first class and business class. We're going, going in with, to economy or, or coach with the same attitude that we really have to make a difference and we really have to deliver a great bread roll. It's as simple as that. We're just not going to put up with the sort of things that happen in airline catering currently uh, throughout the world. It's pretty endemic to all airlines. Does the health consciousness come into what you're doing? Because I think if you have fresh fruit, even yeah. at the back of the plane. That's great, isn't it? I mean, that, that whole thing is very, very foremost in our minds in the design process is <laughs> how we actually make sure that we make the, the time that a passenger spends on a plane better for them. So yeah, it's lighter, it's fresher, it's simpler, and, and it is delivering a lovely ripe piece of, piece of fruit and great, great bread rolls and fresh salads and good dressing. Those are the things that we're really focusing on. How would you um, design a menu for say business class yeah well what we do is we actually look at where we're flying from so we look at say if it's LA what sort of produce is great here and what works really well like what let's be specific well again you know we know that we can send the guys from the catering center to the Beverly Hills cheese shop and they can get some great cheese or we can we can go to La Brea and get great bread you actually go to, to first class places like that rather than looking for wholesale food and that type what of we thing. do yeah and we do I mean what we do is we try to drive the the perception of, of the guys in the catering center and say look this is this is the sort of quality of food we want you know let's go out and find it I see. Uh, and we show that to them and then we, they use some of those people which is fantastic and what we do is we look at sort of what the business class traveler might want so something that's really fresh some some simple salad we, we will go and, and look at say things that are great here which is beef is fantastic I found the ducks to be duck to be really brilliant oh, you here. did you have yeah. uh, so work through those sorts of things I mean lobsters great here um, you know so we, we have a look at what what we believe is terrific out of LA so and we try I, to utilize that in the menu I think sometimes we uh, kind of live under the uh, perception that 
everything that goes on Quantasate comes from Australia. Sure. But it doesn't, no, in fact. No, of course not. <laughs> <coughs> well, if we did that, we'd have to sort of freeze everything and fly it over. And, <laughs> and then it would be frozen. Yeah. It wouldn't be up to your standards. But what we say is that it's really, uh, it's got very much an Australian philosophy behind it because we actually work with the catering centre to sort of bring that sort of unique contemporary Australian attitude to the food using the best ingredients that we can from LA or whether it's London or, or, or Bangkok or wherever. Um, that's, that's the sort of spin we like to put on it. Well, how do you keep in such good shape? Uh, no, I'm really fat at the moment. Being a, being a chef and <laughs> tasting all this food. <laughs> I think I just, I'm just really busy. I work a lot of hours and I'm on the run and and uh, yeah, at the moment through Christmas I've been eating too much and drinking too much and having too much good time, so I've got to get back to the gym. Yeah, you do go to the gym. <laughs> Occasionally. Oh, yeah, yeah, have a swim. <laughs> Neil Perry, we want to thank you for being with us and good luck thank on you, your Jack. catering business. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn and we're back with Sammy Shore. Actor-comedian Sammy Shore founded the Comedy Store in Hollywood. That was in 1972. In July of 1990, the Los Angeles Board of Supervisors honored him for his achievement in the field of comedy. Mm. Mr. Shore has been the opening act for such superstars as Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisand, Tony Bob Bennett. Hope, Tony Bennett. <laughs> He's won five. Mar and Margaret. Uh, and Margaret. Julio too. Iglesias. Oh, wow. He's won Moses, five. Moses, even Moses. <laughs> Moses. I walked in the Red Sea. I opened the. I missed it in Egypt. Oh, yeah. he, he's won five Drama Logs Awards for his stage appearances, which include Pal Joey, Guys and Dolls, Those are old, Once old. More with Feeling. I, I mean, original plays that I did. Okay. Original plays, like Hard Laughs. Go. Uh, on Stage and a Little Bit Off. Yes. Uh, the Warm Up. Yes. These are the plays that I won the awards. Well, what, not, those, not those plays. What about um, what? King Levine, the well, new play? Well, that's what I'm doing right now. Written by Richard, Richard Krebel Krebel and directed by Joe Bologna. Okay, so it's, it's directed by Joe Bologna. Right. Hi, Sammy. Hi, hi. <laughs> How are you? How does it feel to be directed by another actor comedian? Well, he's the best. Joe's the best. I mean, it's the first time I've really, Joe was my first writer and Rudy DeLuca, they were partners in New York when I first started doing comedy. And they were my first writers. I'm talking about 30, 35 years ago. They were your first what? Writers. When I first started <gasps> oh, doing comedy, you're kidding. Joe Bologna and Rudy DeLuca, who writes for Mel Brooks and all that, and helped me with the comedy store when I, when I started it. And uh, Joe and Rudy wrote my, some of my first jokes in the beginning. And it's taken, Rudy's been with me all these years now. Rudy's my best friend and my writer and stuff. But Joe Bologna, this is his first play that he's directed and it's taken 35 years for him to come back and all of a sudden here I am back again with Joe Bologna. Does it make him crazy uh, to try and well, direct you? Well I keep you? forgetting lines. Oh, that's yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting lines because I do stand up for so long so it's kind of hard kind of to do a play you know it's, it just it was a little difficult for him. It was fine but well, he's incredible. But does he have a different insight that you w than you would have into what's going on on well, the stage? Well, he could see more things than, than I can. He could see more things. He sees. He, he knows my inner innards, and you know, he kind of knows which way to go with me. So you I, really have to depend on him. Well, I mean, you yeah. really have to believe. Well, not in, depend on but him. But to believe in what believe he's doing. What, if he says, Sam, no, I think you should, but but say it this way, or, or I think it, you should move here because this way it'll give you a better. I go. I, I let him. I let him tell me, and I do exactly what he says. I put my, 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 my sense in, but he's usually pretty much on the button. And he's been right because the reviews have been incredible. Oh, the They're play. A sma the, sma the play's a smash. It's a smash. I have a hit in Wait. L.A. It's unbelievable. People can They're getting sit, sit down ovations. They come in standing. They stand through the whole play. And when I finish, they all sit down. It's the first time in the history of theater in L.A. that people have given me a sit down ovation. <laughs> anyway, so. King Levine. King Levine. Was it written with you in mind? No, yeah, it was originally started out as a one-man play. Rich and I got together oh, and I wanted to do a one man, one, another one-man show. Okay. So it would be in a theater so, and a one-man right, show. one man show see. and it was like um, me playing all the three daughters because it's a Jewish version of King Lear. Oh, so you would have I played every play, part. I was going to play King, King Levine <clears throat> and the three daughters. Right. And when I put it into a workshop and I started doing it, 
I said, how am I going to put the hats and the scarf and the whole and do the whole thing? And, and it was such a hassle for me that I asked one of the actresses there in the, in the, uh, in the workshop to, if she wouldn't mind reading the, this part you know, of the daughters. And she did it. And that's how this whole thing came about. I said, oh, it works much better this way. Having so this, the one girl playing the three daughters. So the writer didn't mind. You oh, no, worked it was together. Then it turned out that way. Then it turned out that way. And, then you, and then you went on stage with two people. One, what? me, and the, the girl plays the three parts. Right, the two people. Barry two. Hockwall is, is the actress that we got. She's incredible. But would, if you had done it as one person, would you be well, wearing put, a yeah, wig the hat, and the doing... Thing, the hat, and it was just so hard to do that. You know. But you know, I love one person plays. I, I do think too. it's brilliant yes, the way... It is. Isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. But, yes. but you know, your director... I have hair, just in case you wonder if I took my hat off. Just, okay. Let's your see. director has to really choreograph you and move you and right. use different kinds of lighting and music right. and right. things. With a one-man show. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, you're out there. I did a one-man show in New York, the, the warm-up, which I was telling you about, mm. uh, at the American Jewish Theater. Oh, you wrote about, it. Yeah. Did you write book, it? Yeah, the book I wrote, it was taken from this book, the warm-up published by William Morrow, 1984. And what and is it? It's about warming up with Elvis, warming up the field. The oh. warm-up is like an opening act, a guy that comes out before and does that. Was it comedy. autobiographical? Yeah, it was yeah, totally about, about you. It was such a wonderful book. And it sold seven, it's in the seventh printing. The first six were blurred. <laughs> <laughs> and whoa, well, it's just, take it off. It's still hot. You can, <laughs> you can get in the library. Anyway, so it was taken, actually it was taken, uh, the play, The Warm, it was taken from my play and made into a one-man show. And I went to New York with it. And then you uh, obviously had to have someone directing that. Right. I, I always thought Martin one. Martin Lando directed uh, it. Martin Lando? Martin Lando directed this with a warm-up in New York. Was he acting? Then? Acting. He got the Academy Award I for know, but was he just acting? at the same time it <gasps> happened. Is that so he right? was splitting both of them. He hit when, when he when he was nominated. He was in the middle of directing my one man play in New York. Oh. And he said, Sammy, I gotta go, I gotta go on a TV show. I gotta go here. Yeah. He was running back and forth, doing a movie, doing everything, and and trying to direct me in this play, which we were working on previously before he got the nomination. So he directed me in this one man play, Martin Lando, okay, and he, and he won the Academy Award, right. Best Supporting Actor, and he got a lot of publicity out of directing my play. It helped my play. How much did he direct before? Well, we were together. We were. We Had worked. he directed yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, he was. Have you ever thought of directing? Me? Yeah. Are it. you kidding? I had trouble standing up. Not. No. I. But I, it's a whole different it's mentality. A, no, it's not. It's not my kind of thing. Not. I, would be like me trying to direct you with your jewelry. No, L you couldn't put it, put it over here. Put it over here. Hanging a cross. You got a cross. How does it you work? got a cross. How about this Jewish star, baby? Yeah. You got. A, you got a lot of crosses. <laughs> Give me a little close up of this Jewish star. How you look? I thought about my hey no melacholoma in my 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 me. See, this is it, baby. How does it look? It looks great. It looks, this looks great. This costs more than all that. That's original stuff, isn't it? Huh? Original. That's original. That's very expensive. Original. This costs eight dollars. Oh well. Eight dollars, but it means more. But to does me. it protect you? Know who's you? giving? You know who gave me this? Me. I gave it to um, myself. I did, bought it for Did you myself. have a blast? I had. I lost my other Jewish star that I had that my mom gave me thirty-five oh, years ago. So you need and to. And I wanted something to, you know, kind of read this. That, how did you, talking about your mom and 35 yeah. years ago, how did you get started in the business? Doing shows like this? No. Yes. Were you the host? No, just being <laughs> on shows like this and getting crazy. Oh, please. Yes, good, like crazy people like you. You mean I could you. be the beginning you of your be, career? Do, you could be a one-woman show. No, I could Joan be. Joan Jewelry. It would be great. <laughs> but how what? did you get started? At a resort in Wisconsin. Oh, that was did? a social director. You went I did the there? Whole, like, oh, you were the, the social? The Catskill only, and this was the Midwest. That's how I started. I started out with Shecky Green. Really? Jackie Green was the fun one. And of the what funnest. were you both? We we're both oh, got Jackie Green and Sammy Shore. We're a comedy team. And oh, then you he, were? we split up and then I <laughs> It was crazy. It was a it was a wild beginning. It so you like, started like yeah. that, but did you take dancing, no, acting, nothing, singing? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. You just either have it, Joan, or you don't have it. It's something that you have. Something that you know it's a it's what they call a funny bone. Here you see this right here. Let me just show you this here. Right here. You see this right here? This is a funny bone. But you see, you see, this is the funny bone. You see, what is that? It's an elbow. See, it's an elbow. It's, it's from here. This is hanging, and this is hanging. That's what happened. This is hanging, and this is hanging. But, it's terrible. It's getting older, it? every, and that's it. Funny bone. That's it. It just and, see, and, and you it's went a natural on? thing that you have, Joan. You can't. But do you think people could do that today? I mean, at to a what time? the kids are doing it today, the young comedians are doing it today. They don't go to comedy school. 
How, what do they do? What, they just, it's instinctive. It's something you that you're Do you think you had a better chance, though? There weren't so many people. You In made my your day, way. there was. That's yes. what I oh, mean. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. It was a different business now. There's, there's comedy clubs all over the place now. People, you know, kids are, have a great shot at it because at the Aspen Festival's going on now. They're, everyone's in Aspen now. You know, the comedy, they're having a comedy festival there. All the producers and all looking for but new But when young you talent. were doing the comedy They room? had no comedy festivals. They had none of that stuff. But, so... Yeah, the Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah. Or those kind of ideas. So did why did you start the I comedy did. store? Why did I start? Because I had nothing else to do. I don't know why. And I gave it to my wife, and she built it into an empire. I got divorced. Mitzi Shore built it into a multi-million. And left me with, the, with, oh, uh, with <laughs> lemons. I got lemons. I'm doing a lemon show. What am I doing? I'm doing a lemon <laughs> show. <laughs> so that was it? Yeah, we that got was, divorced. So I gave it to Mitzi. Mitzi's husband. Right. I was married to Mitzi Shore for 21 years. And four Polly kids. Shore. Polly, Peter, Sandy, and Scott. I don't know. Four I know kids. Polly. Polly. Yeah. My Polly, other kids, Peter. Sandy and Scott. But okay. I know Polly. He's I'm, a comedian. Right. You're Did anyone well. else follow in your footsteps? Well, well, Sandy's teaching stand-up comedy at UCLA. Is that right? Yeah, in a comedy store. Yeah. So people do go and take comedy lessons yeah, well, now, Yeah, well, Sandy's a very good, it, very, good, very, very good teacher in stand-up comedy. She's very, she has an in, insight. She worked for her mother for about 15 years in the comedy store, so she's seen everything, and she's very good at that. So she wrote her own uh, yeah. class. Yeah, she does her own. Do she wrote a book on stand-up comedy. Right. Sandy's Seashore Workshop book, you know, teaches stand-up comedy. But, so. but things must be, as I see, I mean, it's it's a natural for you, but it must be more difficult. I, I was talking to someone the other day, and she said, I wanted to be an actress so badly, but I couldn't remember the lines, and I'd freeze when I got on well, stage. Then she shouldn't be an actress. No, so right. she's directing that. See, all right, so but there it is. But it's true, but people want to do certain things. They want to yeah. be comedians, but if they don't, it's a, it. it's a special kind of, you have to have such, such strength, it, you know, it has to be the, such a passion for it. It has to be that uh, you live and you sleep it and that's all you want and that, you know, and it has to be such a, and you have to learn how to go out and do badly and then learn from your mistakes. And, and have it, and that's criticize really just you. Yeah, and it's just, it's what, very difficult. What happens in these other things that you did? You, you were in musicals. I mean, I talked yeah. about old musicals, but right. did you dance and sing? No, I sang. I did sang, you sing? Yeah, well, did sure, you guys and dolls. And stuff. Singing well, lessons? No. I take singing You lessons. can just get up and start singing? Old Man River, <laughs> that old man river, he oh, don't God. know nothing. What are you holding the lemons for? <laughs> the lemons to yeah, go away. Now I get that, I got a cramp in my <laughs> leg. So you have to get back on the treadmill. Oh, God. Anyway, so that's it. That's the way, that's the way it Did is. Did you really get cramped no, up? No, so I'm just Do you kidding. work out? No. Yes, I do. Uh, do Three, you? four days a week. Gold's Gym. Oh, yeah. do you? Yeah, do you lift weights? Lift weights? I do everything. Are you kidding? Look at me. Are you kidding? I'm built. But I think you need that. Inside don't it's you? rotting away though. <laughs> Everything is rotting. <laughs> I look great on the outside, but you open up your it's all wrinkled and like like this. See? It's okay. Yeah, what were you say? No, no, what, no, what, no. No, what? What's your secret desire? Do you have a is secret it, desire? I want to get your steal your jewelry. No. You really? It? On the stage. Is there any kind of a role that you really wanted the to play, play? The role that I'm playing right now is like the, the 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 best thing I, I think I've ever done as an actor, it's it's intense. I'm playing this old Jewish man who's angry, bitter, you know, pissed off. He's just you know, but it comes out such. They love him, they love him at the end. They just love him because he breaks down with his daughter. His, you know, because he's yeah, real. He's real. He's real. People love to see somebody that's angry. They really do, because on the other side of the anger, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of, you know, anger is, is just fear. You're hiding behind fear. That's all it is. And his daughters were taking away his business, you know, and he built this big Bialy business, you know, the first one that uh, frees Bialy's, Bialy's, and he built this business, and, you know, and then, like Lear, the daughters, you know, come. But would you um, want to do more straight I think acting so. yeah, drama? I th yeah, I think so, because I can do the other thing is really easy for me. Doing straight, legitimate acting is very difficult. I saw... Um a play in Boston the other in Newton the other day. The Newton rep put it on. It was called Beast uh, in the Moon, and this old man. Yeah. And I'm not saying you're Thank an old you. man, but he, he <laughs> narrates it, yeah. and then he takes the role of the young kid. And I can see you doing that part with you know pulling his hat off right. and his curly hair right. and jumping around the stage. I mean, could could you think? Oh, I could do that. Oh, sure. of doing. Oh sure, I could do that. Why don't you call him? Oh. <laughs> 
call. Maybe Let's produce it. We'll yeah. produce it here. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it here. No, but I, I just see you as being able, because of your stature and because of your animation, being able to do right. different kinds of roles. Well, what it is, what it is now with this guy, it, it's just uh, this uh, King Levine. It's just that he's. Uh, He's so intense that, you know, and, and you, people that see me doing this, Red Buttons was in the other night, okay? Now, Red had seen me do my one-man show and really, really liked it. And he looked at me after the show and he said, Sam, you keep surprising me. He said, I can't believe this part that you did. It's just incredible. That's you why. Know? How would you, like, how do you get ready to do that whole drama from your I do, I do shows like this. Your kind of show. Oh, stop. I, yes, you do not. Get, what do you do? Get, How, I, like, what just, would well, one you of start, your lines be like well, that? Well, well, it's just that I get myself, you know, worked up. I get myself, I start thinking about my father. I'm really playing my father. My father was that, was that way. My father used to, we had, he was uh, like five feet one, 100, 100 and, you know, uh, 50, 20, 30 pounds, small type, but he, he was like this. Why do you talk? Why do you think I know? But he knew what I was going to become in life. You look at my report card and say, "What are you a comedian?" You know, is that, that right? Yeah, that's what he would. You but know, did he encourage you? No, not really. But he was always pissed off and angry. It was a different kind of a thing. You had to. You really had to pull this all out and do it yourself. I did, but I was really. I'm really doing my dad. What? What? You mean when you're when, when you're I'm acting? Doing I'm, when you're I'm becoming acting. my dad, Hyman. Yeah. I'm becoming my father, only more so. My father was angry and, 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 and really upset and met my mother and upset at life and was not happy with his life. And I've just taken it one step beyond. It was pretty. Was he an immigrant? Yeah, they came from Russia. See, yeah. that, I yeah. think that's so much a part of that immigrant mentality. Mm -hmm. the, oh, definitely. The, you know, my father had the few furniture, so I'd help him with it late at night. And, and uh, uh, one night, a guy came in, you know, and it was about 11 o'clock. And I was, must have been 12, 13 years old. And he comes in and he takes a gun and sticks in my father's head. Now I'm standing in the back there, and the guy's about six feet tall. It was raining, snowing, it was ten below zero. A gun, it takes it in my father's head and looks down at me and stick, he says, Stick him up, mister. I swear my father looks up at him and says, Stick what up. <laughs> he says, What are you sticking up? He said, he, said, he, said, you see, he said, You see any money? You see any customers around here? You want money? He says, Go to Marshall Field, take all did? the money. Oh. Said, get out of here, I'll kill you. Get. And the guy started to run out. My father said, Listen, before you go, would you be interested in a 9x12 oh, linoleum? Oh, stop I it. swear. Oh, that's we so had a great. furniture store. We no had a wonder you turned into a yeah, Canadian. He's, no, he's, he was crazy, my dad. He was funny. He had a sense of humor. He really that, had a sense that of humor. That was it, yeah. on top of all of, of it. Of course. He you made the show today, so thank you. I did. Yes, That's it. It's over. With. It's over. I well, have can to I have say, a lemon to take home? Take I want to take because I don't have any le ha lemons. Are hard to get in my. <laughs> <laughs> I take now, thank you, Joe. Keep what? keep riding. Keep what? Keep riding to seven 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 South Figueroa, and we will answer your letters. If you want Sammy to answer something, just write to me and ask for it. It'll be on uh, the roll at the end of the show. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on Bye. the Joe Quinn Profiles. Bye. <laughs>